Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls and beautiful people across the whole world, Mrs. Mrs. Misters, Mrs. MXs and everything in between. It's lovely to see you, even though I trip over my words. It's a treat to see you. Let's go ahead and kick off this day five of playing Elden Ring with a view, huh? Let's kick it off with a view and a little summary of what's to come. Uh, we have been journeying around the southern peninsula. When we started yesterday, we had some votes of where is it that we're going to go. And the request was to cross the Bridge of Sacrifice and head on down southward where we discovered Castle Morn. Went through the beautifully designed sequence of Castle Morn. And if any of you are looking to have a pretty easy place to go to early on, I think that Castle Morn is nice if you're getting a little annoyed. Don't instantly go there, but I think it's a kind of a nice path. It's an exploration of some various tombs and catacombs. We found a minor Erd tree in the southern peninsula and had an epic boss fight. Got a little sacred tears, stepping those puppies up. And we've explored around this area, and there's a beautiful walking bell. There's a church on top. We're not exactly sure what's there. Um, but we've explored this whole area. One of the things that we did last time was we went to this Tower of Return. At the top, there is a chest that teleported us way up here to the Divine Bridge in the capital. And it's when this moment happened, I went, holy shit, this game is huge. Because the map just restricts you, right? The map starts you off here, and this is about all that you can pan to. It's insane. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to kick off by heading up these little markers that I placed on the shore, just to remind myself that I haven't yet been here. So let's begin it. And once we clear that, we'll start to get some plans on where we want to go. Do we want to go east? I think I might just call that right after we go through this coastal area. We spend some time in Stormvale, huh? Ahead, take out some of the baddie babies. But Vel run, Vel run, Vel run, Vel run. Kicked us off by reminding us that we have died 25 times to Margaret the Fell Omen. Oh, and has all the boss details and all the counts. I think we're we're just shy of a hundred. Just shy of a hundred deaths. Cycle starts the day off, gifting us 25 subs. My god, a happy Thursday to you, Cycle. Have you been playing slash enjoying? A little bit of Eldon Rong. Oh my gosh, and of course, I need to remember that I need to... Uh, let's put some markers here as well. I haven't explored down the coasts very much. I think that, that you can't actually cross here. We want to explore those areas, too. Let's do a quick jaunt up the coast. And Cycle, who was extraordinarily generous to gift us 25 Subaronis. How are you doing, Cycle, on this fine Thursday? Always tilt your camera down when you're nearby the water. She says, I'm so excited I'm going to see my partner for the first time in two months tomorrow. Oh, my God. Oh, that is the best. That is the absolute best, man. There's been a few times where I've been away from Brit for, like, some number of months. Because she used to do a lot of the international stuff at Twitch. And, dude, when she'd come back, man, let me tell you, it was just... Oh, it was heaven. Oh my god, it was just heaven. Can't believe I have 108 deaths. Ah, ay yeah, yeah. Let's go ahead and go to this set of uh, Twitch uh, viewers over here. Pull this down a little bit. Ooh. Nice. 
I don't know, Aardvarks. I think I finally got my Faith Scythe build in good form. Yeah, I like Strength Stamina. And a good amount of Dex, just to level this up. I want to fit in. Twitch viewer 990 says, I'm a Twitch viewer. I don't believe you. Provide evidence. Where did you get your data? I am a fake skeptic. Xena says, I wish I was that skinny. Yeah, man. Preaching to the choir over here, man. Was there a glisten or a glint? Water out here? I sworn I saw some item. Oh. I see. I don't know how to see. Some good stuff. Time for a strange pulling sensation. On the beach, Day 9 feels the pulling of a strong undertow. Anything over here by the beach? Hey, Ghost, do you remember that slip I was telling you about? It appears the slip has happened. The tiniest slip. <laughs> Ever wanted to play soccer with a skull? Ooh. Why isn't dodge rolling a mechanic in soccer, huh? Oh god, oh god. God, son of a bitch. How do I remove the marker? What is it? Oh, that's the only way to do that? Ugh. Ugh. Let's see how it feels in 30 minutes, Ghosty. Or maybe like 10. Maybe 10's better. I have to learn to fight these at some point. No, I'm not. I'm never going to need to learn to fight these. Sweetie pie. Hi, sweetie pie. Oh god. Ow, 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 ow. So let's come over to here. South Lookout Tower. Perfect. How do you even program an enemy like that? Slowly. <laughs> I mean, it would be probably largely on the animators and the collisions of the uh, little tentacles. Um, Endurance. I'm always someone who's a huge fan of endurance. Let's remove this one. Let's put one over here. Let's see what brings us there. Hmm? Three below nine says, I too am a huge fan of endurance. Oh, hell yeah.
Oh my gosh, I've never been here. All right. It's really interesting, the idea of like, oh fuck. It's really interesting, the idea of like what darkness means and nighttime means when you have this like glowing Erd tree that I've been calling an L tree accidentally forever. All right, be poisonous forever. See how many friends you have. That's right, I climbed all the way up there. Climbed up there and found some useful biddies. Uh oh. Which is game cost? I mean, it's a new release, so like 60, 70, something like that. All right, self-imposed despy break. Ow, ow, this cat. Oh my god. Ah, sweetheart. Can you, please? Ah, okay. She's elegance and grace. She's Miss United States. Great, so there's the Bridge of Sacrifice that is the entryway to the Southern Peninsula. Oh, shit. Bad dogs. Smoldering butterflies. Oh, I'm going to the top of that. I don't think I'm not. There it is. Draw curse is some helpful advice for this game. Just don't get hit. Hey, no spoilers. <laughs> Good God, I love ruins. Ruins are so cool. Mujo Joy says, "Ooh, is this another teleport you miles away tower? Maybe, baby." Oh, and I want to just remind everyone our spoiler policy today. Um, first of all, if there is some sort of UI, UX mechanic thing like this that you want to, that you think I'm missing, please ask first. Don't just go, you know, day nine, day nine, day nine. You, you have a crossbow. Use your crossbow. You need to use your, uh, you know, your other ability. Because I'm pretty familiar with a lot of the mechanics, and often I'm just not using them kind of incidentally. All right, there we go. Okie dokie. Hand ballista. Ballista bolt. Oh, wait, I actually have those. Hand ballista requires 30 strength. All right, and then we have the ballista bolts. <laughs> oh, dude. Oh my god, this is awesome. Oh, shit. <laughs> All right, let's unequip that. 
mean, that's awesome. All right, time to get strength, huh? All right, so we have explored up here. Time to make our way down. Down, down. Please try to use that. It looks amazing. I need 30 strength, and right now my strength is at 23. But we're working our way to it. Hand Ballista is kind of like Tiny Giant. I know, right? If I'm understanding the terrain correctly, this is a big ridge right here, huh? I mean, I'm going to drop down it. This is the path I walked to the uh, rope bridge before. <laughs> I didn't, didn't even see the, the, the tweet that I actually retweeted it, uh, yesterday that was like, fall damage in an Elden Ring is computed entirely by gut feel. The developers look at cliffs and go, yeah, that should fucking kill you. <laughs> oh, these are squirrels. I think there's some sort of unusual um, computations that are going on with fall damage. Because in the other Souls games, it was like anything past 100 meters. Or uh, 100 meters. Jesus. What a spell. Anything past 10 meters starts to deal damage. And for every 1 meter beyond that, it's like 10 damage. You know? Um, I like how I drank it and was no longer thirsty and said, there we go. <laughs> like I'm min-maxing my, my, my parameters. Hi, sweetheart. What do we want today? Do we just want lots of snuggles? I can provide those. Um, but in this game, it uh, there's a computation that involves your dexterity. So the higher your dexterity, the less fall damage you take. And often it eats away at your stamina. But I think it's sort of like... Oh, hi. So I think it creates some sort of, like, exponential-type feel. Oh, oh, he's not dead. It creates a sort of exponential-type feel. Alright, give me a sec. Alright, okay, okay, hey, 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 stop that. You're so playful. No. My cat's trying to burrow into me. Noodle Doodler says, oh my god, you're that guy from YouTube. New here. What up, Noodle Doodler? Please. Please. Enjoy your stay. Here's my cat. She is currently on my knee. She's getting comfy. Seriously, I just wanted to thank you for the Elden Ring VODs, which kept me sane while my dad was going through surgery today. Oh god, dude. Yeah, right? Like... I mean, I was talking about this yesterday, Serial, so you already know this, but for any who didn't, um, I don't know if any of you have had a loved one in the hospital in the last two years for something that is not COVID-related. You can't go into the hospital. You just wait outside, and you're like, well... Oh, shit, is that how these things work? Despi, stop it, stop it, stop it! No, give it back. Walk with me. This is not the only one of these that we've seen. Sorry, I'm trying to keep everything out of the way of my cat. No shit. Oh, that's sweet.
Pickled turtleneck. All right. Do this. Oops, do this. And then what I'm gonna do is... There was the reusable... Lantern. And I guess the reusable lantern probably refills on some combination of death or time or whenever you touch a site, something like that. Which is really nice for being able to see in these places. And by the way, that is one of the sweetest. Yanish says, do you want to know how to use it? My god, Yanish, look at you. Oh my god. Because you asked like a freaking god. I would be thrilled to know. Holy crap. Okay. <laughs> Find your lantern to your quick hockey? Yeah, great. Flame SC. Good to see. Anytime someone has an SC at the end of their name, I'm like, ooh, Starcraft! Like, I get all excited. Venom Lance says, hey, Day9, long time lurker from the Day9 Dailies here. So glad you're enjoying Eldering. I'm at level 104, 80 hours in, and the game never stops being amazing. Good luck. Hey, thanks. Fuck yeah, man. Stomp to a new beat. Happy one year anniversary. Mwah. Yeah, this is... Great. Two birds, baby. Dude, I, I actually feel like I absolutely outgamered myself again. By, uh... Accidentally rolling back. And by accidentally getting... Or not accidentally, but by going... Yeah, I, I think light's pretty good. I'll get the lantern. Talk about best item in the game, man. Yeah, I might start using the pouch mechanic later, but it doesn't really seem like I need to use it that much. <laughs> Ethan, Ethan that says, Oh, you think you're a gamer? Name three games. Um, uh, uh, um, uh, Billy on the Street. Oh, that's a recovery animation. Last boss we fought. Um, oops. It was the frost lady in an ever jail. Hmm. Barcode says, if you consider not specifically breeding larger and larger generations of rats, I mean... I don't feel like that makes a lot of sense, but I mean, sure, whatever floats your boat, uh, you fucking weirdo. Yeah, maybe that's actually the best entry point. Crashing down. Dude, the number of people 
Crazy Pants says, Sean, I love this game. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it's, it's a good one to be playing right now. I am enjoying the shit out of it. And of course, like, it's just one of a set of incredible games that are coming out lately. Like, dude, Total War, Warhammer 3 is actually so good. Silver Firefly, huh? A bear did that. This is the same bear that I fought earlier. Yeah, no, no, no. I, I, I love him so much. <laughs> Paddington has had it. Yeah, no, I gotta give this kid a marmalade sandwich and just calm him the fuck down. Us bulk. That's the same bear. Summoning pool is now functional. Carly sources, your discussions about mental model and how connected to the uh, got me thinking. Oh Jesus, scrolled past. Said your your discussions about mental model have been really interesting, and I was thinking about how connected the idea of gameplay loop, a sort of nebulous idea of how a game is played. Yeah, in fact, gameplay loop. Uh, you know, I've heard. Uh, you know. Like, industry professionals and scholars in the space, in the interactive media space, kind of like, um, Ghosty, I actually don't believe you. I actually don't believe that it's an audio before video thing, because we're, we, we have a full, hold on, I'm just going to reset the whole fucking thing. <laughs> All right, let me come back to the idea of gameplay loop in a second. I have, uh, we're having an issue here, we're having an issue. All right, let me do this. Ghosty. Oh my god, the ghosty. So this actually, I expect this will either be great or a little bit off. No one respond but ghosty, please. Um. Oh, there's the mama rat. Yeah, like, the whole idea of a gameplay loop is a bit outdated. Because it kind of comes from an era when there was a lot of, you know, arcade type games. And the idea of a gameplay loop was what is the obstacle, action, and result that then feeds back into obstacle, action, result. So a simple example of something that actually kind of has a looping property to it is um, the way that loot drop feels in a action RPG where... Doesn't look any different. Yeah, it, th this wait—it doesn't look any different. No, no, you're 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 totally lying, to me, Ghosty. So there we go. Should look fine now. Um, and so the the whole idea of you know the ARPG loop is that you get better loot, which then allows you to go out and get better loot, which then allows you to go out and get better loot, and it it, it is actually like very literally a loop gameplay, you know? Um, but a lot of modern games are not exactly modelable effectively when thinking of them in some form of a loop. Fresh and still no different. Ghost Stalker, I've changed it three times. I've legitimately changed it three times. Am I just on the wrong number here?
Next thing you're gonna tell me, this looks fine. I betcha. Here we go. A bear did that. That was fine, I thought. Again, we're just asking Ghost Stalker about this. Oops, I hit the wrong button. Souls. Oh, they're way over here, huh? I just, I just want my souls, and then I'm gonna roll up the front. What is up with my camera, man? All right, something was. Something was messing with me. Yeah, but I mean, like, if you think about something like Disco Elysium, where you're just playing through a game. And learning about a cool world and facing interesting conversations and stuff. It's not very effectively modeled in that way. But I think that one thing that is really significant and really relevant at the idea of a gameplay loop is that the player's action... Yeah, Ghost Stalker, I would check that out because I've changed the audio setup several times. But if you're having issues, also Ghost Stalker, that makes a lot of sense. Um, for any curious, um, there, for many streamers who are using setups similar to mine, which is a two-PC setup, occasionally the audio in the video desyncs, but also across Twitch for the last two weeks, this has been something that uh, I, I've seen on streams that other people have seen on my streams, where people are like, hey, there's an audio off sync. Oh, I refreshed and it's fine now, you know. So we're, we're trying to sort through that, but I mean, it's still within the realm of fineness. Anyways, 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 anyways. Something that's really important, I think, to the idea of gameplay loops. Is the idea that a player's decision should feed into the player's next decision. Player's next decision should feed into... Or the player's current decision should feed into the player's next decision. So as a simple example, um, in Dota, if you... Oops. If you perform a nice play and pick off an enemy, you get more gold that lets you get more items. And that meaningfully changes the ability for you to do your next thing. But Zinnia, no, no one needs to mention anything about audio. Ghosty and I basically have a complicated setup where we just are constantly reviewing. And the thing that's baffling me is not that there is a desync issue. It's that Ghosty seems to have his stuff doing something independently weird against our usual process, which is what's kind of interesting. But I think it's really easy in a game um, to make... to make these types of actions not actually feel connected. So, for instance, um, if we take this game right here, you want to explore, because exploring is inherently fun. You want to fight and win fights because those things are inherently fun. By the way, uh, let me just clear chat and remind all of you, I am not asking for any feedback about the audio. I was just sharing it conversationally that something interesting is happening specifically with just me and Ghost Stalker. Everything's fine. Everything's totally fine. So anyways. Uh, when it comes to, to this game, exploring is fun in and of itself. Combat is fun in and of itself. But you want these to kind of plug into each other. You want these to plug into each other. And so, for instance, whenever I go to my map and I explore and I find a castle and I overcome and I kill a boss, I get a whole bunch of souls slash runes that I can then spend to increase my power and help me in combat, which then allows me to explore more, which allows me to get more runes. You know, like... And, you know, calling it a loop is simplifying for no real reason. Screw those souls, you know? I don't need them. Alright. Just studying him. Alright.
camera's doing some jockety stuff that's being a little bit more obnoxious than it would be in an open space. But that's fine. This is the game. And I kind of abandoned my souls for a moment there. <laughs> for the sake of an expeditious journey. Oops. There you are. Uh-oh. Shit. Alright, hold on. I'm gonna let myself die really fast here. I don't know where I am. <laughs> yeah, I, I forgot to use my, uh, my little waste lantern. It's actually fine. Kesslin Rogues, new question, why gather souls? Uh, you can use them to power up. Stilton says there's a setting for the camera avoiding walls that makes it jitter that you could turn off if that's what you mean. Yeah, no, I, I mean more so like the challenge in this section is clearly connected to the tight spaces, which I just need to be thoughtful of. It's kind of like there's an enemy with like a really fast move. I'm like, oh god, that move is really fast. Jesus. It's not like, oh, the designers need to change anything. It's like, I need to rise to the challenge. Oh, fuck this rat. Fucker. Try binding the lantern to the Y button. I don't think I want to do that. The Y button is used for a lot of stuff. Oh, I don't kill you? Get the fuck out. Oh my god, it's the exalted fish. Good to see you, Exalted Fish. We've been trying to use you to power us up for ages. Leech's back says they mean the quick menu when you hold Y. I know what they mean. I know what they mean. I, 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 again, I know about the pouch mechanic. I'm just saying that, like, this, this top button is used for this kind of switching. It's used for picking things up and acquiring and closing menus. And I want to have less relevance on this top button, because I feel like this top button is overloaded in the game. I actually really like bosses like this, where... Ugh. All right, that timing's a little different. Fuck. Oh, nice. It's a new move. Can I just, like, really hang in into his body? Okay, so I actually need to roll, like, between his legs if I want to dodge that. I like bosses like this that, like, don't have a huge amount of health. But have, like, really ultra high damage moves. Holy shit. So it's, like, a very quick, intense fight. too early on that one. Alright. <laughs> gotcha. Ugh. Oh, that move is so fast.
Ho, 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 ho. out of that hell bar. Oh, we. Yeah, I, I really like fights like this that are really swift and punishing. But, you know, the enemy did not actually have that much, that much health. Nice progress. Thanks, evil trick. I am known to be a powerful souls gamer. What? What is that symbol here? And actually, let me see something. Coco brings his mind the only one who only who hates L3 dismount. I actually just hate L3 as a button. I wish I could unwind this whole button. I think L3 and R3 are bad buttons. <laughs> really? Really. Little bastard. Oh, that lantern is disgustingly good. L3 and R3, I feel like, were accidental innovations where they were just like, you know what? We can actually probably just, like, make this a button. Juanalosa says, how dare you? Your father was an L3 button. Ah, so that's where you got your genes that make you so hard to control. Shield up, I'll be fine. I must have been confusing it last time I said, oh wow, I broke it.
God, I love points. Getting wedged against the wall, like literally, I, I just could not move. Ah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like when I was in, when I was like literally like seeing into his torso, I was like, oh god. The bear is gone hollow. Do you have any summons just avoid using them? Yes. I yes to both. Talisman's the thing in the older souls game, they were not a catamount. They were not at all. Probably be a little bit more spare on the R2s in this fight. favorite spot.
Oh, hit him. Oi, 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 Spell Drake Talisman, fuck yeah. Oh my god, yes. Katrina's Lily. Uh, wait, no, we don't want to do this yet. Let's go ahead and briefly check out the Spell Drake Pal Talisman. Spell Drake Talisman, uh, this is Boost Magical Damage Negation. All right, so this is good. This is actually a good set of things to have if I'm ever in a location where there's a lot of them kinds of things. Unicorn Jam says, Day 9 continues his war against the local fauna. <laughs> Sit on notes. Nice anagram names. Or not anagram, palindrome names. Says, wow, as a new Souls player, I'm really impressed by how quickly you learned the bear's moveset and timings. Well done. Thanks, Sita Notes. I was actually pretty pleased. I was actually pretty pleased. I felt pretty good. I felt pretty good. I think that, um, you know, there's an element to all of that where I'm just like, oh yeah, let's go back to the, let's go back to the little rune thing. Pick up your souls. Uh, no, I did not. Are the rats back? They are. You know, I'll just do a quick run. Just do a quick run. Didn't get the souls. Didn't get the souls. Didn't really need it. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, like... I think you just start to get into the habit after you've played a few Souls games, where once it clicks, your brain starts to just know what to look for. And there's some fights that are... easier or harder than others. And there's also things like, you start to... Because, I mean, I've played every single other FromSoft game. I've played all of them. And so, as a result, th there starts to be these little patterns that you slip into where you're like, oh, is this... Is there a way that I can squeeze in a heavy attack here or light attack? You know, when I was... 
greener in the game. When I was greener in the games, I would just only try to get him a quick slash. But then... I don't even know what a rune arc does, but I have it now. And that helps a ton. Yeah, Ghosty, I haven't touched a damn thing since we last spoke. How much damage is heavy versus light? I mean, it's, it's like 50% more damage-ish. I'm starting to get more used to this sort of switch. Because this used to just be like the whole Y button. Oh, this is why I was stuck. I must have been knocked up a little bit. Huh. <laughs> yeah, even trying to navigate to my souls was difficult. I was like, yeah, no, that explains why I felt stuck. That must have meant that the bear was trapping me a little bit, but then also the wall had a little bit of a, uh, like a, like a hook in there. More like Earth Snore Cave, am I right? Pfft, these fucking rooms. Resident Teacher says, uh, local news, Day 9 is knocked up by bear. I know, and the bear isn't even going to pay alimony. Yeah, we, we, we've been to this tree. Also, uninvited guest, um, if I can once again say for uh, my sake, but especially for the folks here in chat, Ask retroactive questions instead of future-looking questions. So instead of like, hey, has Day9, you know, beaten the dragon that's over here yet? And everyone's like, what dragon, you know? Things that are a little more open-ended and non-spoilery, like, hey. I'm so cool. I'm so cool. Did you see me jump slash? a little bit more open-ended we'd appreciate this is my bad i figured a giant tree was okay because i knew the tree was shown on the map well the thing is that um that, that you're right that's probably right on the edge um but for instance if i had not explored this i might not like for instance over here when this was all dark i could see the erd tree but i didn't know that i could actually get to it until i showed up to the um map site and got that vision Lysman says, can we give vague directions to cool spots? Super duper no. Absolutely very unbelievably fucking no. <laughs> oh, let me let me discover the game. Oh, Lysmith. Oh, Lysmith, Lysmith, Lysmith. Well, let, let me let me at least open a window for you. We're gonna explore the remainder of this and down to here, and then we will be done with this peninsula. At which point, I'm probably going to go to Stormvale Castle, and we're going to do some uh, open votes. Hey, where should we go next? But it's not going to be, you tell me where I should go. It's going to be, here's a vote, and you get to vote on it. That's what we did yesterday, and it was a lot of fun. Tension on strings. of areas is vague directions and veiled spoilers are probably the most common, most egregious. Yeah, no, I agree. Oh, what the fuck? It's not the enemy I thought it was.
Oh, what? He just broke through it? What the fuck is happening here? Alright, the weak spot is the dick. Alright, hi, Sheriff. Okay, drink this. Oh, shit, not that. <laughs> I actually put on my fucking lantern. Hit him in the genitals. Hit him! Well, look, look who is so patient. Look who's just the most patient little friend. Hi. I know, I missed you while I was fighting the demigod. This is Sheriff, she's my very sweet cat. Oh, yes. Oh my god. Look at this renegade plant. <laughs> oh, shit, you fucking assholes. Get out of here. Ah, oh, get fucking... Ah! Oh. <laughs> here, come on. Come on up. Hi. Oh, okay, Sheriff. Here, let me cross my legs so that way you can get a nice little, little vantage spot. There you go. Yep, thank you. Maybe that's really good. I really appreciate that. All right, so what are we thinking? Are we thinking maybe the shoulder? Yeah, go ahead. Come on up. Or do we maybe want to just do the lap? I think, I mean, I'm fine with either. It's like whatever you want. The lap? Yeah. Oh, we're still not, we're still not deciding whether we want to curl up on the lap or whether we want to climb up on the shoulders. It's okay. We got it. We got to be patient with our little baby. So let's go ahead and take a peek at this equipment that we just got. It's way down here, huh? Wait. Where? Lord Sworn Straight Sword? Where is this thing? Why am I not able to see it? There it is. Sorcery scaling 60. Okay, cool. So this is this is for you int bastards that just go around shooting stuff, huh? Oh, we are we are making bread on my tummy. It is nice right now. She's digging her claws in. This is one of the reasons why I wear if you watch the stream, I wear these kind of shirts that have this, like, um, what are the name of these shirts? It's like baseball jersey shirts, whatever they're called. I wear these a lot because this one was, like, super cheap, and the cats just dig their claws into my stomach. And so, you know, they get to tear it up a little bit. Baseball tee. There it is. Yeah, I got these baseball tees. Make sure my little cats can, if they want to. Dig their little claws in it, it's okay. Lavis says, I haven't tried it yet, but his magic really is easier than melee as it seems. I mean, kind of. I mean, kind of. Okay, goodbye. Um, you, you have to manage different resources. Where's New Better Box? And yeah, I see some conversation between the uh, Ghosty Thanavaries and New Better Bot. In, in regards to spoilers, a good rule of thumb is that if I am talking about it right now, reacting to it is great. Or if there's past looking moments of that moment that I'm bringing up. You know, like for instance, if I say, dude, Blighttown, oh my god, what an incredible, 
area of Dark Souls. Oh my god, probably my favorite zone. Then if you're just like, oh my god, I died so many times, and then uh, I, I, it was worth it because I got the whatever item that was located there. You know. That's great. Or when I started the game, I went to Blight Town first. Like, those are the sort of things that are great. That we encourage, that we invite, that we're like, oh my god, that's so tight. But if I were like, ooh, Blighttown was such a great area in that game, and you're like, when you beat the game, did you choose to uh, just let the world go to darkness? <laughs> or let the world go to light? Like, I'm allowed to spoil? You know what I mean? Or if clearly we're talking about the whole game, you know, those sorts of things as we're doing right now, then it becomes more okay. But we, we, we want to err generally as heavily as we can on the side of... Try not to spoil. Avoid spoiling. And, I mean, really, it, it comes down to a specific kind of question. That is of the form... Oh, how do, how do we not know? How do we not know? A bunch of items in the middle of a field? Not in my Souls game. The, the, the thing that we don't like is, has Day 9 done, and then it's something that I might not have done? Or if, for instance, you saw that I was playing against Margit the Fell on Day 1, and you're coming back, hey, I've missed a few days. Did Day 9 wind up beating Margit the Fell? Great, it's perfect. String. We found the rope. We did it. We found the rope. We got the rope. Then on done drugs, not really. Unless you count some common ones like coffee and alcohol, and Advil and shit. No, I'm not a drug user at all. Like even a little bit. I'm not even like. Oh yeah, I did shrooms in college. No, not at all. You know, one of the big reasons why we tend to be pretty hard-lined about the, hey, no spoilers, no spoilers, no spoilers. In that, or, or like, no backseating, no spoilers, is that the last thing that we want this stream to turn into... I'm just not going to fight these guys. I don't have any interest in it. The last thing we want this stream to turn into is an instruction fest. This has happened before on streams that are, you know, where it seems like, you should use this weapon. No, don't listen to so-and-so use this weapon. Well, I think this weapon's really good. If it's done in a conversational fashion, it's focused more on the conversational aspect, then it's actually, like, fun and social and community building. But when it's, you know, people vying for their specific command to be realized on stream from the streamer, this is where we wind up with some issues. Hopefully that clarifies. Hmm. I wasn't expecting that one at all. Plus puzzles, yeah, I remember there's some puzzle game the chat was going absolutely crazy about. Is there, like... Huh. What is going on here? 
Smithing stone? Oh, hell yeah. I don't remember the specific puzzle game, but puzzle puzzle games are have been rough. Like I remember uh, in Baba is You, I would be trying something, and I'd be like, ah, I don't think this is it, and someone would like put the emote and uh, like of the hair pulling, going, "What is he doing? Ah, oh, he had it," you know, things like that. And I'm like, "No, no, you're taking the way to fun for me." No. I mean, like, uh, here's something that no one did, but is an example of the sort of like, do this, do this, do this. Um is okay so take that rune bear i have 20 fucking nine <gasps> i am so rich oh my god time to buy a yacht dude when did this happen yeah like the the rune bear i thought was a really fun fight and i was really feeling like i was getting it and there have been times in past souls games when there's someone who's like sean duh! Just use Pine Resin, just use the summon. There's a trick to be able to one-shot him. You know, that sort of thing. And I'm like, no, but I like I like trying to learn the fight. Someone's like, but it's gonna take you forever to learn the fight when you could just win by doing this. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, my name is Day9 and I like my hand ballista. Excellent. Strength and stamina might be where our focus is till we can unlock that hand ballista. Then we'll catch back up with our dexterity. Because I'm sure there'll be a B scaling thing. Ha 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 Okay, bye-bye. Let's see if anyone reacts to the giant ragdolling corpse. No, I mean, what's the big deal? It's just a ragdolling corpse. I don't even understand what the deal is. That said, there's times when we occasionally will ask for backseating. And then that's great. I mean, this is a welcome surprise, huh? Oh my god, the sneezies. Spherical, has got any tips for getting over the shame of reaching out to an ex and getting rejected? Oh, what do you, what do you mean? Like, you had an ex and you were like, Hey, I want to let you know I've been doing some thinking and I still love you. Oh. And I'm saying that in kind of a slightly more cynical, jokey way, because uh, that's what I did. <laughs> I've been thinking a lot and I just think we should be together. We're so good together. Sean, Jesus Christ. The answer's no. Oh, okay, that's fine. I respect that. Um, Hunix says, oh, snap, you're here. I remember this place. I will say nothing. Perfect remark. Spherical says, nah, more like booty call rejection. Ah, I see. Ah. I getcha. I'm picking up a foot now. You know, the, 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 um... I think when it comes to, like... Those sorts of things, like, okay, so this just, I feel like this connects to a generalized notion of the two kinds of apologies that exist. One kind of apology is where you are trying to make sure the other person feels taken care of. Hey, I want to let you know, you know, I, I, uh, for instance, th there's been work projects where, um, due to the fact that, like, a lot of what I do is live, there's been work projects that are along the lines of, oh, hey, man, I wanted to talk to you. Uh, like, we had to pull, like, a 13... Oh, Jesus, you're robust. We had to pull a 13-hour day. Oh, you're not dead. We had to pull a 13-hour day, and I want to let you know I'm I'm really sorry that, uh, you know, we mess up the scheduling and you wound up working five more hours than a standard eight-hour day. And I'm sorry I want to make it up to you. I want to make sure that you actually get five hours off you know, early next week because you really, you know, helped us a ton. We wouldn't have been able to do it without you, but it's not okay for us to 
be asking you to constantly work, you know, these sorts of things. Uh, you know, th this is a very normal human interaction, like where one person does something that they feel like has wronged another, and they want to take care of them with a sorry. But the second type of sorry, the second type of sorry is, I feel bad, I feel guilty, reassure me. So, for instance, you can imagine in this example that is not fictional, that's actually something that did happen. You can imagine me going, dude, I'm really sorry. Oh, I just feel like I keep messing up as a boss. Oh, my God. I feel so bad. Oh. Or, you know, I... I know people that have broken up, and after they've broken up, they've hooked up a few times afterwards, and it was overall a positive experience for both of them. I think this can work. I'm not going to sit here and go, here's the, the, the silly, arbitrary rules that I have invented that makes me know how relationships should work. Yeah, I literally know of people who have done that, and it's been, it's been fine for them. Sneaky, Dan. I think that, like, if you make, uh, you know, that kind of request of someone and get rejected. Oh, I'm getting stabbed, aren't I? Oh, I love that I can stagger. I think it's really important that if you want to make any sort of apology, you want to try to make things right in that situation spherical, that it's important that you draw the line and say, what am I actually trying to do? Is it that I feel guilty and I feel bad and I want this person that I may have already applied pressure to, I want to pressure them more? And then after pressuring them more, get them to reassure me? Or is it like, ah, you know what? I feel like I've wronged them. And even though we're not together, I want to let them know that I really care about them. And I want to extend an apology and make sure they feel better. You know, maybe it's that second one. Yeah, we tried that, but it got messy tonight. I got weak, but he took it really well, and we're all good and everything. I'm just feeling ashamed of reaching out in the first place. Hey, it's okay. It's okay, Spherical. It's okay. You know, like... Uh, I gotta use a restroom in a sec here, so maybe I'll go to some place. Maybe I'll go to some place that looks a little bit safe. It's okay. Let, let's, let's, first of all, let's not debate whether it's a mistake. Because I think whether it is or it isn't is not relevant to me. Let's assume that if you had not reached out, it would have been better for them, would have been better for you, would have been better for everyone, and everyone in chat would have been rejoicing that you, in fact, didn't do it. You know, Let's assume that's the case. That's okay. Oh, shit. And by no means am I saying I am happy that you may have caused harm when you could have avoided it. What I'm saying is that you're a person. I have personally not treated people well. Not because I wanted to, but because I fucked up. It's all right. I mean, like, and, and I carried shame about a lot of that for a long time. And I recognize it's fucking hard, man. I mean, like, because, <laughs> you know, I, I have joked about my volatility as a younger person. I've joked about my volatility in the early days of broadcasting, like, basically when I was in my 20s, all the way up until I was probably, like, you know. Well, let's be real. I'm, I'm embarrassed about shit I did last week. It's fine. <laughs> In particular, in my 20s, you've heard me joke about being, like, a really emotionally volatile. Oh, God, fuck, oh, shit. Oh, Jesus. You know, like, and I, I was... I didn't have a grip on my own emotions. And I wound up just being hurtful to people. As a very simple example, just being really snappy with people if I'd had a long week. Or a long weekend. Frankly, there's times when some of you may have come up to me at an event after I'd just worked a long three-day weekend. And I was like, no, I need to go to bed. And I was like, unnecessarily, bleh. You know. And you know what? It's okay. 
And again, okay is different from it is actually a good thing. It's okay to have done something that you're embarrassed by. It's okay to have done something that you look back on and go, oh, gosh, stupid me. Oh, my gosh. That's not being a bad person. That's being a normal person. And the fact that you're acknowledging it, the fact that you're introspecting about it. Oh, shit. The fact you're introspecting about it, it is the good thing. That's what learning is and growing as a person is. Oh, you dodged. Let's see if I can backstab for some help. One quick one. I remember actually joking with a friend a long time ago who was, this was a few years after college, a few years after grad, it was like 2015 or something like that. Joking with a friend who was uh, single and had like gone out to some event with the express goal of trying to meet more friends and maybe meet a, pot a potential love and there was someone who he really clicked with at the start of the party or the event, or whatever the hell it was. Really clicked with him. And, like, really, at, over the course of the night, basically wound up annoying the shit out of this person. And she was just like, dude, fucking fuck off, man. Like, actually said something kind of harsh like that. Again, delineating between inappropriate and harsh, because he admittedly was like, oh god, what was I thinking? What was I doing? And I mean, he was, he was really beating himself up over it. That's why he was talking. He was like, dude, I just feel like such an idiot. Like, I was really excited, and like, you know, uh, I'm really embarrassed that when I got excited, I became annoying. Like, oh my god. And what was funny in the conversation is when they came out of it, it's like, does, you know, for all that you're beating yourself up over this and that you're, like, feeling embarrassed because you're imagining her thoughts about you, when this happens, to what degree does that person even exist anymore? Like, is it really that there's a person out there who's thinking nasty thoughts about you and it's actually meaningfully materially coming back and dealing actual harm in your day-to-day -day life? Or is it that you're just beating yourself up a little bit? Or maybe a lot of it? And that that's the thing that's tough to deal with. And again, if you're like a true sociopath, you'd be like, oh, yeah, well, I'm never gonna see her again, so that's fine. And you know, let's let's not let's not be that, <laughs> right? Because if you're that sort of person, you get a Netflix documentary made about you. But it was more so the idea where it's, where like we were joking about how much of a like you could literally pretend like, well, that sucks. She doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> oh, when I asked a guy out next weekend, he got annoyed the exact same way. Well, all right, he doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> like, there, there, there's so many of these things that, that like, you know, th these kinds of feelings, you know, where, where do they come from? Well, you imagine yourself in certain situations. All right, I suck. You imagine yourself in certain situations, and you react to imagining yourself in that situation, and that can help be the guidepost for you, for your behavior. Oh my gosh, I imagined that I snapped at someone while I was broadcasting live, and I felt weird just thinking about this, so I didn't do that anymore. Uh, 
I knew I'd find myself in the stones. Um, I lost track of my train of thoughts because I was trying to orient myself. That's where I came from. Oh gosh, what was the last sentence that I just said? What was the last sentence that I just said? Oh no, oh gosh. I was trying to orient myself and my brain was like, you don't need to remember what you were talking about at all anymore. I don't know, we have some cop. Like literally it was the last sentence before I got super sidetracked. I was talking about like Karen stuff with you and the not being a sociopath. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you very much, Kitchens for Yeah, you, you imagine yourself doing things, and this can, by your emotional reaction to imagining things, you, you guide yourself a little bit. I could imagine myself snapping in front of you because I'm really annoyed at one person, and maybe part of me feels a little righteous, like, yeah, because that person was being a dumbass. Another part of me is just like, oh, fuck, I can't believe I'm ever thinking to it. Oh my god, I'm, I'm such a bad broadcaster, etc. You know, there, there's these various ways in which you envision things, but also, sometimes these envisionings can haunt you and stick with you. You know, like for instance, Spherical, you probably, if this is an X that you reached out to, well, even if you only dated for a very, very short amount of time, you probably have an unbelievably good ability to get yourself really emotional, frustrated, feeling good and or feeling bad. Oh shit, I don't want to fight anymore. I need these restrooms. Is this hot? Oh. I I literally have died to you. HPs. Rusted anchor. Man, this game is really elegant with how swiftly it unlocks new items for you. Much, much more clean than the other Souls games. Did I not even get hit? I'm such a gamer. But yeah, I mean, you will. Um, because you know this person very well, if they're an X man, you you have all these very smooth, refined neural pathways in your brain for imagining their reactions to things. Like literally, like t tell me this hasn't happened to you. Tell me. Oh, that's right. That's the. Never mind. Never mind. Tell me you haven't imagined doing something, considered doing something, evaluated a decision in your life. And then imagined what your parents would say, and then you're just fucking mad. God, my mom is such a jerk sometimes. You didn't say anything to them, they didn't say anything to you, but you just figured it out, and you're pissed now. Right? I don't know a single person who hasn't done this. Like, dude, I can actually do that, right? I can actually probably get myself so worked up imagining shit that, shit that like, my mom or my brother would say or something like this. I would immediately just be like, oh, fucking Nick. Nick, no wonder your ID's tasteless and other biting remarks. And I think it's important to acknowledge that that is, it is false that they are doing those things to you. It's true that your prediction probably has some accuracy to it. How do I explore the other side here? I just want to briefly take a peek at the other side of this cliff. It's false that they're doing that to you, but... It's... Um, it, it can still be causing real psychological stress and strain to you. As a result, I think it's important to be really careful with things like that. These are the types I tend not to get mad. More sad that I'm thinking about doing something that someone would disapprove of. Oh yeah, I struggled with that for years. Years and years. 
I actually kind of had this really sort of funny uh, series of years with Britt, my wife. We've been together for like almost 10 years now. For like a long time. Now, in my free time, believe it or not, I like to play video games. Not all the time. I like, you know. Ooh, cool. Get off the horse. I like reading and watching TV and going and doing stuff and hanging out as much as an next person but I really like games. Oops. And, you know, when Britt and I were living together, there's... I used to feel this, like, pressure. Like, I could not play video games because if I did, I was a bad husband. Well, I guess the time, bad boyfriend. But I'm just so used to saying, uh, you know... <gasps> I'm just so used to saying shit like, you know, like, uh, like, uh, husband, you know, it's too easy to do it now, yeah. But anyway, yeah, like, I, I used to be really stressed out, and I actually still remember, I'm thinking of this because I'm playing Elden Ring, but I remember playing, uh, being like, Brit, is it, is it, is it okay if I, like, play Dark Souls? And she's like, yeah, like, literally so casually, it's like, yeah, of course. Get off the horse. Literally just so casually, like, yeah, of course. No, fucking get the fuck off this. Oh, that's luck right there. I'm getting camera souls like crazy here. Okay, I'm gonna finish the story. Yeah, you know, it's like, honey, is it okay if I play Dark Souls? Like, very sheepishly, like I was asking her if I could, like, you know. Do you mind if I set all your clothes on fire? Like, I, like I was asking her something crazy. And she's just like, yeah, of course. Like, so nonchalant, and she just, like, went back to, like, reading a book or something. And I was like, okay, but, like, I, I, I think I might play it for, like, a few hours. She's like, okay. And like a dude, lightning strike, nice. And it, it was just kind of—it's kind of funny to think about in retrospect, because like, you know, I was like, oh well, I mean, clearly it's not okay for me to do this. I mean, it literally took me like quite a long time. Oh, I'm about to die, huh? It took me quite a long time to realize it's actually a normal thing to want to do your own thing. so funny how like in fact a, a lot of uh, the reason why I think I like spending a lot of time alone is that I'm a pretty empathetic person so it's very easy for me to imagine all the judgments and frustrations that someone would have regarding how I'm behaving at any point in time and because of that I just find it easier sometimes to just like be alone so I like don't have that pressure I'm gonna briefly use the restroom. I'll be back in a quick, quick house. Yeah. All right. Let's go to somewhere a little more calm. Ag Heel Lake North. All right, where it's a little quieter. Gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. So let's see, what, where do we wish to go? We have basically gone through the Southern Peninsula, and I think pretty much we've cleared it. I can't think of an area down here that we haven't gone through, and man, that wound up being way more. I think I did that one. I actually haven't done, I don't think I've done the Storm Hill Evergoal. Even though it's Everjail, I call him Evergoal. <laughs> uh, so I'm gonna, so in a moment, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put up some poles for where we want to go. Notably, 
be, uh, it's gonna be finishing Stormvale Castle or going to this Erd Tree. We're really gonna restrictify this. I think I did go to this baby Erd Tree. I actually only recently realized that those little glowing trees. I. Yeah, um, now I need to... Ah. I'm gonna do this ever jail. Going in the right direction, good. I'm gonna do this ever jail, and then we're gonna start doing some stuff. Doing some stuff. But yeah, I only recently realized that the baby air trees is where you can actually get... No, no, no. Baby air trees where you can actually get the, um... Seed that increases your your flask count. You know, I actually think I'm just gonna go. I'm, I want to go to the Stormvale Castle. I want to go to the Stormvale Castle. We're gonna try a complete Stormvale Castle. Then we'll then we'll start opening things back up a little bit. I don't remember this guy at all. Is he a horsey? Oh, this this turd. All right. You, you, my friend, do not get broken. Stupid delay attacks. Okay. Okay, video game. Okay, that is a long sword. <laughs> I really want to do some Stormvale. Hey, Caleb Hart 42, good to see you. Hey, how was your stream yesterday? How was that? How was that good old Stir Fay build? Because I saw that you were like 50 hours in approximately, and I was like, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna host and then I'm gonna walk away. Oh, I forgot to get my shit, huh? This guy's like a Dark Souls cosplayer that's taking it way too seriously. You just get punished. This reminds me a lot of the bear. A bear did that. A bear did that. Enter the ever gowl. Once again, that is pronounced jail. I do know. Bobax is occasionally killing this time I've seen it. Ooh, I really want your clairvoyance to be correct. How many hours in are you? Defrosted Wang? I am maybe 25 hours in. All luck and no skill makes Sean a good boy. Oh, come on. I was behind you. See how he, like, draggy waggies it for little bitty witty Fucking shit. Oh! Holy shit, he does a lot of damage. I switch up my strategy a little bit. I 
Oh, JT says, we saw what pressure did yesterday. Five gifties if you drop this twerp. All right. Let's get into the zone. Did you hear that? Oh. Jane Davis says, when do we start betting channel points on this fight? Ooh, let's let's wait till we get to a major boss. Because this this guy doesn't actually seem like he's gonna be You know, one of these like real life stoppers. He seems like he's gonna be pretty straightforward. The the thing that is the real challenge right away is that he has really weird swing timings that uh, I I have not been able to read correctly yet. Uh oh. Oh he's pissed. Yeah, like that attack. Ooh. And also his range is a little different than I expect. So I'm kind of like walking up to him, getting a sense of what his moveset is. too early. Yeah, see, it's just weird pauses. Weird pauses and he has really high damage. Sick looking shield. Hopefully that's the drop. I love shields. I mean, again, I like the short sword, but you've been seeing me sort of switch up my uh, armor. Such small windows. Yeah, I think we can... Ah. Oh my god. Ever since Sheriff and Despy both visited. Strange pulling sensation, so I just unlocked Blighttown. Pray for me, fellow gamers. Wait, wait, wait. Are you playing DS1? Jail. Bottom says this game is super gentle with the Souls Retrieval. It's one of the gentlest... Souls games. It's it's really lovely. I have felt continuous progression. Yeah, I mean, like, trying to get a sense of how he. Oops! Oh, fuck. <laughs> you make one misread and you're just instantly dead. <laughs> Steak of Malika. He does enough damage that um, I'm not entirely sure guard breaks are good. Maybe a guard break at the end of sequence. Oh, 
Oh, I didn't know he could follow up with that. There's a lot of rolling back and occasional rolling forward. Yeah, I, I need to be really careful with the listen. Take of Marika. Unicorn Jam, is there any chance for a break soon? Gotta take Pup out, but I don't want to miss anything. Ah, Unicorn Jam. You should just take that puppy out. We'll still be working on this. Oh! I mistimed my first roll. I can actually get one in there. Generally not be using this. Ah, fuck. Damn, damn. Damn, damn, damn. runs you down. Yeah, he, he just like... Mm. I think it's one of those where if you just don't worry too much about trying to heal and just try to like get in there, I think it's probably going to be a better fight. <clears throat> also, part of me wants to like get my parry back. Because this actually seems like one of these bosses that would be really, really strong to parry against. Oh, he can swing after that? Ah, 
Oh, I rolled, you fucking asshole. close to him. Oh, I don't have a shield. Oh, I don't have a shield. Getting that. Oh, that that shield. I think we, we are understanding that being close is good. Okay. What in the shitting shit and fuck in the what? towards him there. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, 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 okay. What? Okay. I think that we have the right play pattern, though, which is you stay really close to him, and then you pick off his little tiny... Uh, after his little tiny moves, his little tiny gaps, swing on in there. It becomes his little flappy boy. It's no biggie. We're just going to roll through him. Hmm. Mm-mm-mm-mm. Also, apologies, everyone, for um, uh, not muting initially. Mr. Gray Screen, we're level 37 from heaven. I'm going to try once more. Actually, you know what? Like, I did say I wanted to try out a different shield that had parry. Nice. I mean, th this might actually become super straightforward. <clears throat> Has a less effective uh, guard block than the other shield, but, you know. <clears throat> Alright. Okay. I need to work on my parry time in general. I think it's a little late. I'm like not hitting a single parry, but that's alright. Yeah. 
yeah, this is this is gonna be way better. Plus his attacks are so slow. Had to get owned a little bit just to get our parry timing down. And I expect that this will probably happen a few more times. I basically lost the entire set of my <laughs> my regen flasks. When you hit the button, I swear to god, I don't get the parry timing in Elden Ring or even DS3. I mean it, it's parrying is just tough because. You basically have to get that right when you would be hit. And I think it is about the moment at which you're hit. You're not trying to necessarily parry the animation. I think I could be wrong. They're trying to parry with respect to the animation, as much as you are, to the strike point. Apo Koala says, hey, Sean, how you feeling? Apo Koala. Feeling good, my friend. I am feeling good. Very good, to be honest. I don't even parry a footstop. I am actually 100% certain you can't, Yanish. I know for a fact you can't. Why do I keep doing it? Because I'm a machine learning algorithm. I'm just going to keep doing the wrong thing until we randomly do the right thing. Come to me, baby. I'll get him. All right. So there's there's stagger periods in there that I'm not accounting for. Hmm. And I'll note to any of you who have not played the game yet, or who are playing and feeling a little discouraged, I just want you to observe how I'm going through this. I'm not actually fighting against him here to be like, ooh, I'm gonna win, I'm gonna try to kill him. Gosh, how do I try to go for success every single time? Like, these are kind of like learning runs. And if you view Dark Souls as a game where, you know, it's kind of like, frankly, decorating your house in Animal Crossing... You know, you just spend a ton of time. You're not trying to, like, get it done in, like, five minutes. You know, you're actually spending some time. Oh, wrong button. Glug, glug, glug. Maybe some of these attacks can't be parried. Oh, I thought it was going to be out of the range. So I'm actually trying to incorporate into a strategy. Seems like an incredibly tiny window. But the fact of the matter is, like, you know, this is a little bit more like Animal Crossing, you know, where you're... I'm just going back again and again and again. We're going to spend probably, like, you know, another 20, 30 minutes trying to see if we can get this uh, smashy, parry -y kind of thing going. Hmm. April Qualls says, hey, Sean, how you feeling? Oh, well, I mean, it's great now that my main man, April Qualls, is coming here to hang out. <laughs> all right all right Ugh. Uh, i mean i'm trying to parry every single attack to try to get comfortable with it so
And it could be that we just wait for certain attacks to parry. Notice you're hydrating, dude. Apo Koala. Water is overpowered, man. Oh my god. Can you parry Stomp? Uh, Loki, you definitely cannot. <laughs> Fucking hell. Oh, I thought I actually had that. I thought it was owning. Oh. I mean, I know his other animations actually pretty well for the sake of dodging. not entirely sure that I can even dodge that. <laughs> so, when I do that, um, when I do this and it goes, Conk, and a little bit of health gets removed from me, but I don't actually do a parry. Is that like a pseudo parry? I, I don't actually know what that is. You know, I, I'm just gonna... I'm going to stop pairing. I'm going to go back to what we were doing before. time. Drink. Yep, 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 yep. I was doing the timing for the stop. I didn't do any rolling at all. Rusty, little rusty from trying to parry every fucking thing. Look. So yeah, I mean, I, I think that our strategy is just go two-handed with our nice sword and do stuff. I, and quick question for myself. Um, how many... Need another smithing stone too. At some point I'll have to learn where all those locations are. Don't spoil, don't tell me. These curses are certain sword attacks not parryable? That might actually be the case. Oops. Six thousand souls is probably good, huh? Oh, I rolled.
Oh, I, I knew it was coming and I rolled a little off time anyways. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. The camera tends to like favor a certain side and I got like locked on the other side in that, just that last swing. God, I really need to get a better lint roller. This one's out of adhesive. Yeah, dude, it's the upward sword slice where he's like... <laughs> but I actually think we got it. This guy's the king of punishing timing. Oh my god, I know. He, like, knocks you up and then he, like, does a magic attack that hits you again. After he... Oh, whoops. See, it's that attack that's hitting me a lot. Just a little bit on there. Just a little, little, tiny bit. Just a little, little, tiny bit. But I think we actually got it. I think we're going to get it within 10. Then we're going to get it within 10. This is it. This is it. We're going to get it within 10. Hmm. Yes. Pseudo Perry. <laughs> What a short run, huh? Timmy Tong says, is, is it possible to backstab this guy? I don't know. I've tried a few times. And haven't been able to get it to work. Oh, I didn't realize you could chain those moves together. Oh, all right, fuck it. Yeah, I've tried a few times. I've been able to get it off. I can't actually tell if um, that's concept art or whether that's just like up rendered game images. I think I'm out of range. Not like that. Ooh. 
Ooh, bad timing on my part. Oh, I just didn't hit the roll button. And then my character screamed as I did. Stake of Marika. It's kind of funny because I was like, oh, I'm going to go to Stormvale Castle. Oh, actually, let me just finish clearing out this guy. Here we go. It's so funny to think about how different this is than the bear that we fought against. What? I literally was unable to move. Literally was unable to move. Of Marika, Stake of Marika. Oh, yeah, we're doing it. We are doing it. We're doing it. sword. so soon. Alright. Alright, we can actually do that. He's not changing too much when he levels up. The thing is that, like, once you once you get a comfort around the rolls of things, I think his health falls pretty fast. Did you see my whole body jump when that thing... Came to me, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> like literally, because I thought it was gonna go, oh, oh, and he like pulls back, and then he's like, I'm on you. Come here, step away a little bit so he charges. Shit. I trigger that? Fuck. I keep thinking I'm out of range.
yeah, yeah. I, I, I suddenly am noticing that if I just bop the guy's shield, he seems to charge at me. So I was trying to force it a little there to see if that was true and just wound up taking some hits when I didn't need to. But What well, does he play? Uh, is it okay to suggest items yet? Nah, no suggestions, no spoilers, no nothing. You can sh say what you did in the past of things that I've already completed. But for instance, on this fight, if you're like, I beat this by using this item that you get over here, then that spoils it for me, you know? Because I'm having a blast. I am loving playing against this boss again and again and getting more comfortable with the parry. And if, for instance... see if I rolled forward and took a uh, drink from the flask, if that would be enough. Because uh, then I actually don't ever have to walk away from him, because my overall strategy is I get close to him and just kind of hang around him until I take some damage, then I back away and heal. And I was like, oh, but if I can roll in and heal, then I can just stay close to him all the time. And I learned in that that there's actually not enough of a window. Jump. You can still see the Dark Souls 1 muscle memory where I hit the A button. Hello, old friend. Remind me that I need to reset an alarm. That's a good window. Oh, shit. I tend to do my buckling for my whole body rolls. I tend to do that when I am waiting for the timing, and then it's wrong. Oops. Yeah, 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 I felt that timing being off. All right. Yeah, Velbrun, I don't look at spoilers for magic. 